hung that picture up and I swear it makes my room look so different. Is that just me? Like it looks so different. Oh, I have to fix this, this is annoying me. Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I didn't know what I wanted to talk about today. In case you haven't noticed, I've kind of just been doing like some fun videos lately because I don't really have anything to talk about. So I asked CJ what I should make a video on and he said, answered prayers. And to be honest, my initial reaction was, I can't talk about that because I don't even know what I would say. I honestly don't feel like I've had very many like experiences where I have felt my prayer was answered. I know that God listens to me. I know that he blesses me. I know that I feel the promptings of the spirit, but actually receiving an answer to a prayer, I don't have a lot of experience with that. Because every prayer that I have given where I've really asked for something, I feel like that the answer has come not in the way I expected and very, very delayed, which I guess is what I should talk about. So on like a regular basis when I'm praying, you know, I ask to bless the missionaries, bless the prophet, bless our government leaders, bless my church leaders, um, help us to make good decisions, bless us with health and strength and safety and protect us and watch over us. So I feel like, yeah, every day I am receiving answers to those prayers because, you know, we're okay. All is well with us. But then when I think about the times that I was really like pleading to God for something, uh, I never got like... An immediate answer. I know CJ has experiences where he has. In fact, um, he remembers very clearly a Sunday night where he had read his patriarchal blessing and he got down on his knees and prayed and was like, okay, Heavenly Father, I'm really, really ready to find my wife. Like I've been dating, I've been trying to find her, I've, you know, thought maybe I've found her and it hasn't worked out. I'm really ready. Please, please help me to find her. And the next day was the day that we talked on the phone. So to him, that was like an immediate answered prayer. For me, it's definitely been more delayed. I mean, there are, of course there are times where like when Ireland had her surgery, um, for those of you who remember that, she was 11 months old, this crazy freak thing happened and she needed to have surgery. And, you know, of course CJ gave her a blessing and I, you know, prayed and prayed and prayed that it would all be okay. I was terrified that when she came out of surgery that she would never wake up. Um, and it wasn't like a big deal surgery. It was on her ankle. It's not like it was on any vital organ or anything, but I still was just terrified, tiny little body under anesthesia. And you know what? It all turned out great. It was all totally fine. She recovered fabulously. So that's like an answer to my prayer. But the, the biggest one that I can think of are the answers that come in unexpected ways. So one example is when we got in our car accident last May, that was a huge, huge, scary deal. I was pregnant. Ireland was in the car, really horrifying. And, you know, we all physically turned out okay. I was definitely worried about the baby, but you know, pregnancy wise, seemed, everything seemed to be fine and no major injuries to any of us, but my car was totaled and we do not want to have a car payment. And my car was in great condition. It did not have a lot of miles on it at all. That car was gonna be CJ's car for the next forever until that car died. So I was planning on driving this car into the ground and now it was gone. And Cause CJ's car is on its way out. We know we're gonna have to buy a new car when his dies. Now we're gonna have to buy another new one to replace mine. Just was not a financial burden we are wanting. So we prayed very hard that we would get a good estimate from the insurance company for that car. I was so terrified. Everything I looked up said we were only gonna get you know, smaller amount and I was just so terrified that we were gonna get a small amount. We miraculously found the car that I now drive, which is newer, has fewer miles, and is bigger, has more room, which is great, you know, now that I have two kids. And it was like the exact same amount that we got the check for. The only thing that we had to pay out of pocket for was the licensing and registration stuff for the state of Washington, because our car had Arizona plates on it. So that's amazing. That only cost us like a thousand dollars. Like literally, the check that we got was seriously for the same amount the new car was, a better car. Like that was crazy. That to me is like the biggest answer to prayer. Big, big blessing, especially coming out of something that was really scary and kind of awful. But then there are times where my uh, prayers have been kind of confusing the answers. For example, I remember when I was in high school and I was dating my high school boyfriend, you know, who wasn't a member of the church. There were many times where I would go to young women's or girls camp or whatever. And I would basically be told that I needed to get married in the temple so I shouldn't be dating someone who's not a member of the church. 
And I, I was just so confused. I would pray and pray and pray and ask Heavenly Father, what should I do? Am I supposed to stay with him? Are we supposed to break up? What is supposed to happen? And I never got a good feeling about breaking up, ever. And it was so confusing to me because my patriarchal blessing, the person that it was describing was obviously not him. This is R from my book. I just remember being so confused because why would everything tell me basically I shouldn't be with him, but then my prayer, my, with the feeling that I got, the answers in my head said, no, don't break up with him. I forgot to add that something that was confusing about my high school boyfriend thing was that we ended up breaking up anyway. So why would God tell me to be with him if we were just gonna break up anyway? I know that has happened to a lot of people in regards to a relationship. Like they pray about marrying someone, they get the answer yes, they get married in the temple, and then they end up getting divorced. And it's hard because there's another person involved, but I think in those types of situations, the answer is yes for that time. But as you change and as the situation changes, the answer can then later on become no. Uh, the answer was yes, I should be with him. I shouldn't break up with him for that time period. But then later on, different scenario, which makes people question God. I know it's, it's a really hard thing. So then something that's really hard with prayer is, especially when it's something that you know is very important to you, it's really hard to distinguish between your own thoughts and the spirit communicating to you. I know for a lot of people, the answer will come through the scriptures. Like they'll read a conference talk or they'll read a scripture that answers their prayer. So it's not something they hear, it's something that's like brought to them or another person. Something, someone does something or says something to them where they're like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I needed to hear. That was totally an answer to a prayer. That just reminded me of something else actually. I was really nervous about receiving my endowment. I had heard some conflicting things about it. Not details, but just in general, people saying it was scary, it freaked them out, they have never gone back because they didn't like it. And someone who is the wife of a friend of mine, I have never actually spoken to her, but she's my friend's wife. She messaged me. This was the night before I went to go receive my endowment. So I was going to receive my endowment at like 8 a.m. the next morning. She messaged me at like 10 p.m. the night before and said, I just wanted to share this with you. And she like bore her testimony to me about the endowment and garments and it calmed my heart so much because I was nervous and it's hard to feel the spirit when you have all these other feelings, you know, doubt and fear can't take up the same space as faith. So it would be really hard to have faith and feel the spirit when all I'm feeling is nervous and scared. And so she totally, totally helped to like calm my heart, calm my nerves. And I was able to have an amazing experience at the temple. So that was an answer to prayer. Again, coming from someone else. It's not something that I did. It's not something that the spirit whispered to me. It was someone else, some other experience came to my life. But then there are times where it seems like our prayers aren't answered because it might take a really long time. Or sometimes we're praying for something that has to do with someone else and it's kind of out of our control. Like if someone has left the church and you're hoping that they come back and their testimony strengthens or you're praying that someone will be healed from an illness and that doesn't happen, or it's just something that we really don't have control over and it might not go the way we want. That is really hard. So I have a little poem I wanna share, and I've shared this on my blog before, but this is very, very meaningful to me. So I wanna share it with you. Okay, I had to have grab a CJ's phone so I could read this to you. But the poem is called Wait. This is gonna make me emotional. Desperately, helplessly, longingly, I cried. Quietly, patiently, lovingly, God replied. I pled and I wept for a clue to my fate. And the master so gently said, wait. Wait, you say wait, my indignant reply. Lord, I need answers, I need to know why. Is your hand shortened or have you not heard? By faith I have asked and I'm claiming your word. My future and all to which I relate hangs in the balance and you tell me to wait? I'm needing a yes, a go-ahead sign, or even a no to which I can resign. You promised, dear Lord, that if we believe, we need but to ask and we shall receive. And Lord, I've been asking and this is my cry. I'm weary of asking, I need a reply. Then quietly, softly, I learned of my fate as my master replied again, wait. So I slumped in my chair, defeated and taught and grumbled to God. So I'm waiting for what? He seemed then to kneel and his eyes met with mine and he tenderly said, I could give you a sign. I could shake the heavens and darken the sun. I could raise the dead and cause mountains to run. I could give all you seek and pleased you would be. You'd have what you want, but you wouldn't know me. 
You'd not know the depth of my love for each saint. You'd not know the power that I give to the faint. You'd not learn to see through clouds of despair. You'd not learn to trust just by knowing I'm there. You'd not know the joy of resting in me when darkness and silence are all you can see. You'd never experience the fullness of love when the peace of my spirit descends like a dove. You would know that I give and I save for a start, but you'd not know the depth of the beat of my heart, the glow of my comfort late into the night, the faith that I give when you walk without sight, the depth that's beyond getting just what you ask from an infinite God who makes what you have last. You never know, should your pain quickly flee, what it means that my grace is sufficient for thee. Yes, your dearest dreams overnight would come true, but oh, the loss if you missed what I'm doing in you. So be silent, my child, and in time you will see that the greatest of gifts is to truly know me. And though oft my answers seem terribly late, my most precious answer of all is still wait. That, I feel like there's nothing more that I could add to that. We want our pain taken away. We want a sign, we want direction. We want an answer to a question. And we, we've been told, knock and it will be open unto you, ask and ye shall receive. So why then do we not receive? Why is then it not opened? It reminds me of a post that I just saw today actually by Al Fox Caraway. She talked about doing what God wants her to do. She's received direction from him and this is what he tells her to do. And it might have a lot of negative consequences like the pioneers accepting the gospel and being persecuted. like. Why, when I'm doing what God asks, am I then being challenged? Like, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I prayed for. Especially when I'm asking for things that are righteous and good and I'm doing good, righteous things. But what I've learned is that all my unexpected and unwanted is handpicked by God himself. And then I love this. She said, my favorite things have come from my unwanted paths. God has brought me down. Take heart in things not going how you wanted. Take heart in your unexpected in your hard, in your confusing and unplanned. It's God hand crafting a path for you. So sometimes the blessings are immediate. Sometimes we hear a whispering a direction. Sometimes we you don't know why we're given that answer. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is wait. Sometimes the answer comes from someone else, but it'll work out how it's supposed to, when it is supposed to. And part of the beauty as that poem described was that when we lean on God, when we strengthen our relationship with him, instead of turning away in anger and say, you're obviously not listening, or this isn't the answer I want, or are you even there? Or I'm mad at you for putting this in my life. We gain so much more by clinging to him, by strengthening our relationship with him, by leaning on to him. Because as it says, we, we will know then how he loves us and the, the strength that he gives to us when we're weak, when we're faint, the power he gives to us. It's like, not being able to know joy without knowing pain. As he says in the poem, I love the, the description of the glow of his comfort when we're walking without sight, when it's in the night. So using a metaphor of not being able to see and having it be dark, his comfort glows. It's not only about what God is going to give us. I know a lot of people will try to provide someone with some comforting words of, well, there's something better for you down the road. You know, God closes the door so he can open a window. Something better is coming. This sacrifice, this hard time, this thing that you're missing out on, something better is coming. And that's true. But the thing that's better isn't always something else. It's, it's you that's better. If something ends or some hard experience goes on and on and doesn't end, it's not necessarily that there's a light at the end of the tunnel for this life. We know that in the eternities, of course, th that light comes. But in this life, we might not get something better. There might not be some window that opens up to our door that's been closed. But the reward is us changing, us developing stronger faith, stronger testimony, stronger relationship with our Father. I get asked all the time for questions on how to have faith and whatnot. It's not something I'm good at. I'm a control freak. I like to have answers. I like to know what's coming. I don't like asking for help, which is probably why I don't have a ton of experience with answered prayers because I have a hard time asking for things, even asking God. I don't like to get on my knees and let those words come out of my mouth because it makes me feel weak, because it makes me emotional to admit that I need something. But unless we ask, 
we're gonna miss out on what we could be receiving. And the greatest thing that we could be receiving is stronger spirits, us growing, us growing in our relationship with our Father. God is anxiously waiting for the chance to answer your prayers and fulfill your dreams, just as he always has. But he can't if you don't pray, and he can't if you don't dream. In short, he can't if you don't believe. <sighs> faith precedes the miracle. We have to have enough faith to ask the question, to say the prayer, to believe that we will receive an answer because God wants to bless us and he wants to answer our prayers. And it might not be in the time frame we want. It might not be how we want. The answer might be wait, but it's worth the wait. And it's worth whatever he has prepared and planned for us. I will end there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.